Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco, and coming up, the Boker Shampshire I forgot to show off last week, two new Wii's on the way, one from Gavco, and practical to tactical, 10 do-all folders. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. My favorite comment from this past week was from Nomadic Adventures, uh, a great contributor to Thursday Night Knives. Nomadic says uh, about the Berg Blades Iron Wolf. He says, if we were kids, I would ask to come over and play with your toys. As always, fire knives and walk around of blade features with honest content. Thanks again for the great work. Uh, two reasons I put this up. It doesn't really have much to do with the Berg Blades Iron Wolf, which is outstanding. And everyone was pretty much uh, unanimous in the comments that it's an awesome knife and that I indeed should have bought one uh, when I was handling it at Blade Show. Uh, but I like this because, uh, yeah, this is what we used to do, you know, oh, you got the new Millennium Falcon. Uh, well, that shows how old I am, but, uh, whatever the, the newer Star Wars toys were, and you go over to your friend's house and you mix and you mingle your, your action figures and their guns. And then at the end of the day, you have to separate it all back out. And, uh, it would be like sort of an adult version of that with knives. And, uh, so anyway, I just like that. Plus it's a positive comment and, uh, I, I think I'm alternating between positive and negative comments these days. So uh, this was a good one, and uh, you're welcome. Uh, so thanks, Nomadic Adventures, and everyone else who commented. Um, got some great comments this past week, getting some some good engagement. So it's nice to to talk with everyone and to and to see who's watching. So thank you, thank you, one and all. All right, I think it's time for a pocket check. Okay, so I've been sick the past three or four days, and I've been sort of milling around, uh, moaning and complaining, you know, the way men do when they're actually that's not true. I have been the most, I have been the most stolid sick person ever. I've been the most stoic uh, because I don't want to hear that that old trope. Oh, men are such babies when they're sick. This is one of the things that kept me from being a baby. I had these in my sick pants the whole time. Uh, this is the Manticore from Heretic Knives. Now, why did I choose this as my wander around blindly and moaning sick knife? I, I don't know. That's the whole thing. Um, I think maybe I was feeling bad for it. Uh, I, I bought it July, you know, for July 1st, that, that uh, wonderful date when uh, automatics became legal in Virginia. And, uh, and then the rattle. There's a little rattle which can always be expected in out the front knives. But for some reason uh, that turned me off for a short while, but I'm back. I'm back, baby. I love this knife. Uh, it's got a really great action and a, a, an amazing blade hollow ground, just beautiful to look at. Uh, I haven't done much cutting with it, honestly, but uh, I have to, I have to imagine that this Elmax from uh, heretic, especially with the, with how sharp it is and with the hollow grind uh, is going to cut very well. It, this has jimping, which I really uh, appreciate on the back of the blade here. Um, you don't see that too much on out the front knives, but you see it here, and I like it. I also like the graphic effect of the black and unfinished blade. What did I use this for? Absolutely nothing. But I figured if someone you know busted into the house uninvited while I was sick, this would be a good one to have in the pocket with that full four-inch blade. Um, just a beautiful beautiful knife here. So this is what I had on me today. Um, I also had a couple of other things. Um, well, this is, I had all week, but today was a regular day, like an unsick day. So I had to go out and leave the house. Yes. And I had to put on pants, uh, like regular ones. And so I had this in my waistband. This is my 1558 Revere, uh, from Josh Fisher, a master, uh, master bladesmith. Um, this is one of his knives that he sells, you know, that he sort of mass produces and sells, uh, like many, um, like many forging, like many bladesmiths, they have their special knives that they forge from scratch 
each one like a snowflake. And then they have more um, uh, uh, repeatable runs. You know, we see this with uh, the hog tooth Tonto I'm always carrying. That's that's Matt Chase's, uh, you know, inexpensive production knife that you can get from him that he doesn't labor over as much as a forged blade. Well, that's kind of what this is here. You've got a beautiful Coke bottle handle when you look down at it from this aspect and uh, really nicely contoured in every dimension on the handle. It's very, very comfortable. And then you have that beautiful recurve blade. Now this is uh, sold as a hunting knife. Of course, I see it as a fighting knife. You've got a beautiful recurve, a deep belly, <coughs> pardon me, a deep belly that sits below the knuckles and a point that goes about center line, maybe a little bit lower than center line. Um, and then uh, a, a very um, stick in your hand sort of handle. So this thing to me, um, yeah, I better be great for hunting. I don't know, you know, for skinning, I guess. I'm not sure. Uh, but I do know it would be, it would be, it would work with a lot of, uh, you know, sort of fighting scenarios. Uh, but if you look at it, it's about the same size as the Manticore, except it doesn't need all that handle. Uh, to accommodate the, uh, the the blades and the mechanism and the spring and such. So nice, uh, nice carry. That's a four inch blade, four inch handle. All right. Uh, for emotional support, I haven't really put this one down much since I've gotten it. It's uh, it's the Tempest Knives Pinion. Um, our good buddy KC uh, at Knives Fast. This is his uh, knife company and this is his first uh, production knife. And I jumped on this one, especially... Uh, he was nice enough to send me the prototype. I got to check it out and I was like, "Ooh, this one, uh, you know, so I jumped right on the uh, pre-order and then it came not too many months later and I've been so pleased with it and everyone has been raving about theirs and that's so nice to see in here. Um, so there you go. I had that for emotional support. Hey, what's so emotionally supportive about that, Bob? You might ask the action. Oh, the action is just butter, butter. This is how I like it. If it's going to be drop shutty, that's how I like it. Give it a little, a little gentle, and uh, if it fits really nicely in the detent when it locks, when the, when the detent, uh, when the blade goes in, it, it just has a very satisfying thunk. All right, last up, I did have a slip joint on me as usual, and this was my canine jack from Jack Wolf Knives. Uh, this is a dog leg jack. That's the, that's what, referring to the handle shape which I always assumed was just for style and looks because I'm shallow. But having this in hand, this being my first dog leg knife, I see how really ergonomically um, purpose driven that shape is. It fits, nestles in the hand perfectly, um, just anatomically perfect for this kind of grip. Um, and then another thing I really dig about this knife is that blade. I'm always kind of eh, about spear point uh, or pen blades on slip joints. They're my the least interesting to me. But the way this one is designed with that real bulbous belly up front, I, I, I really like it. Uh, I like the downward angle of the cutting edge uh, that results from making such a wide belly up front. And um, well, as with all Jack Wolf knives, I love the deep, deep hollow grind. Um, so beautifully, nicely done. And uh, I wonder who makes these. He's not allowed to, to say, but every, every, I'm sure everyone's got their theories. And my theory just changed, just looking at this. Uh, but it doesn't matter. Uh, all that matters is that they're beautiful designs, very, very well made. So Jack Wolf Knives, uh, this is interesting. I'm looking at this, and uh, two of four of the knives I carried today are by uh, friends. And... Um, they're friends that have developed since kind of falling in love with their work. Um, well, actually, that's not exactly true. But it's nice to be able to carry knives that have been made and designed uh, by people you know. Before I got into custom knives, and I, I can't say I'm fully into custom knives. I do like custom fixed blades because, to me, they're affordable and uh, and, and attainable. Uh, but... Um, the thing about uh, carrying knives by people that... Uh, or I'm sorry, about buying custom knives is that you get to form a relationship with the maker in a way. And, um, you know, even if you just buy the knife and talk to the guy once, like this 1558 spoke with him at Blade Show, we still made a connection there. And I now I know who made this knife and I've seen his family. They were all sitting at the table. And to me, that means a lot when I have this, because 
it means more to me than coming out of a factory. All right. I don't want to I don't want to dip into some sort of a fever dream rant here. Uh, I might because I'm not 100 percent. So I'm just going to say uh, if you're interested in the kind of content we put out here, you want to help support the show. Go check us out on Patreon. We've gotten a couple of new patrons recently, and uh, I thank I thank them all on last week's show. But I thank you again and and the patrons who have been with me, um, you know, all along. I appreciate you one and all from the gentleman junkie. To the traditional junkie, you are all awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, so go check us out on Patreon. Quickest way to do that is to zip uh, zap that QR code or go to theknifejunkie.com slash Patreon. I'll repeat that complicated address. It's theknifejunkie.com slash Patreon. If you're a knife junkie, you're always in the market for a new knife. And we've got you covered. For the latest weekly knife deals, be sure to visit theknifejunkie.com slash knives. Through our special affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on your favorite knives. Help support the show and save money on a new knife. Shop at theknifejunkie.com slash knives. That's theknifejunkie.com. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Seems I have a story like this every week or every other week, but we is coming out with two new sweet knives. I added the sweet part because I don't always feel that way, but these two look like honeys. Um, the first that we're going to talk about, well, actually, we'll, we'll talk here. Let's see. We'll, we'll go in reverse order. The one uh, that you see in the main picture of the Knife News article is a little EDC that's a sub three inch blade called the Cherith. Not sure what Cherith means, but it's got gorgeous milling in the handle. Uh, this is a the one that we see in the picture is a spirographic pattern, but they also have um, they're also coming out with a frag pattern that you can check out. Um, I love this purple blue lavender um, anodizing. Here's the thing. I'm not sure if I can live with it. Uh, I used to think I liked and wanted purple knives because I love the color purple. Uh, but when I had a, a purple Wii, it was a it was a big Warncliffe from the 600 era. Um, it was just too purple. I just couldn't. I just never went for it. Um, but uh, I thought it was an interesting uh, blend. It was a gnarly looking knife, something kind of scary looking, but in this beautiful sort of teenage girl purple. So uh, I thought that was an interesting contrast anyway. So here on this Wii Cherith, a sub three inch, but just slightly sub three inch. You've got a titanium um, frame lock. You've got the spirograph or um, or frag pattern milling, and you've got a beautifully uh, thin and high height uh, or, or full height flat ground 20 CV blade. So looks like yet another really uh, sweet little EDC from Wee Knives. And this looks like a Wee Knife, does it not? I mean, at this point, we can say that we can really see a design style in Wii and Civivi knives uh, done in-house. This looks like a Wii Civivi, no doubt. The next one, however, warms the cockles of my heart. This thing, look at this blade. Okay, if you can't see it, it's a Gavco. It's the Gavco High Fin. And uh, do, you, do you know Gavco, Michael Gavco? He's uh, He's been making knives for, I don't know, it, it's got to be at least 12 years. I used to watch his videos when he'd make these sweet fixed blades and he'd do tutorials on uh, YouTube, you do tutorials on Kydex. That's how I learned how to make Kydex sheaths. And all along, just, uh, well, back in those days, he started producing folders. And ever since, he's just been making these absolutely gorgeous shark-themed um, knives, folders. Uh, the high fin, I'm not sure uh, exactly. I think that's referring to the maybe the harpoon on top of this Warncliffe blade. But it just... This to me is exciting from Wii because Gavco's designs are exciting and I, I like him. I've never met him or know him, uh, but I like him um, and I like his design. So it's cool to see such a, a high quality brand picking up his his uh, designs. I mean, I, I know Wii has produced others of, of his designs, but uh, not under the Wii banner. So it's kind of cool to see. And um, yeah, I just like it. Three inches. The Warncliffe blades are the, are the places... I can go down in blade size. So this might be something I'd consider. If it were three and a quarter, three and a half, 
it would be a moral imperative. So maybe I'm glad about the size. Uh, you look at it, the ergonomics seem like they might force you into a position, uh, but I, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think the um, two finger partition is nice and shallow. And I think you have that uh, thumb swale. I think you're going to have great control over this um, very classy utility knife. That's the high fin, a uh, new one coming from Wee Knives, I think by the end of the year. I think th that's what they said about both of these. Uh, not sure on the blade steel on that. So two new knives coming from Wee. Next up, CRKT. Uh, you know how they have quite a relationship with Lucas Burnley and uh, the Squid, a very, very popular budget knife from them designed by Lucas Burnley. Well, it's gotten the um, limited edition treatment a number of times. And this second limited edition squid coming out is um, produced by an Italian OEM, unnamed, but doesn't matter. They're all, they all make pretty nice knives. Um, uh, Italian OEM, this one has the, um, it has a longer blade shape than the original squid. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, longer blade shape than the original squid and uh, taking it up to 2.68 inches from 2.25. And it's also giving you fat carbon scales on that sort of uh, picture framed uh, frame there. Is that what it's called? It's not a picture frame. You know what I mean? Where you can see the uh, liners standing proud. Um, and it's coming in at 4.9 ounces. I had a, and, and this one has a flipper. That's also a new uh, aspect to this. But I had the squid, just the standard squid in steel frame lock, um, 8 CR13 MOV. And it was a charming little knife. I really did like that knife. I gave it to, to a friend. I can't remember what I did with it, but I gave it to someone. But a great, great little knife and a cool design. And I like seeing it here bigger and more fully fleshed out in a luxurious way. I, you know, I've, I, I don't want to say it. that sounds dramatic, but I'm in a dramatic mood. Um, I, I, I feel like I've lost hope for CRKT in one way, which is like, I'm never really expecting them to appeal to me, uh, in a, from my collector's point of view, but I like them in that they bring, um, unique and innovative designs from, from designers uh, to to a, a general buying public. And I think that that's a great service. Um, but once you get to a certain point, you become a steel snob for no apparent reason. I'll tell you that. I, I know that for sure. It's not like I've taken 8CR13 MOV to the max and, and wished I had more for the job I was doing. But once you kind of get in the collector's mindset, you know, materials do matter. And um, so it's cool to see this design that I liked a lot uh, kind of dressed up a bit. And I wish CRKT would do more of this just as a matter of course, get rid of the 8CR, get, adopt D2 uh, as much as possible, and then move up from there. Um, because they've got a good thing going um, with what they're doing, what they're bringing to market. I think so. Anyway. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to stop that talk right there, but I do think it's cool that they went to Italy. They're like, we gotta, we gotta have this made really classy really classy. What do we do? Have it made in Italy. All right. Still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast. We're going to take a look at a knife I mentioned last week, but I don't even know. I think it was in the fifth pocket of my jeans up in my closet. And then we're going to take a look at practical to tactical. These are 10 great do all except hunting folders coming up right on the Knife Junkie podcast. The Get Upside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. Get Upside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit theknifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's theknifejunkie.com slash save on gas. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. Okay, so this is a knife that was sent to me by, by Boker. Um, uh, when I requested the, uh, the Texas toothpick, um, I also, by uh, Chaz Fisher, Chaz, uh, after he was on the show, asked if he could send me a boker. I said, please send me the Texas toothpick, and he sent this along too. And it's a cool little switchblade. It's called the Shamshire, and uh, I'm not sure if that's just a different spelling of Shamshire. I can't imagine it is because 
This looks nothing like a sham share, which is a a um, a long, very very curved um, saber from the Middle East. Um, speaking vaguely, uh, the sham share. Uh, so I think sham sure is something else. Anyway, this is designed by Dariel Castan. You can see his logo there, and also another fella. I can't read that, uh, but very very cool little fifth pocket knife this thing uh closed is two and a half inches maybe let's see yeah two and three quarters inches long and then that blade coming out it's it is a little one but it's a sweet little blade i do like it uh this came with a burr on the on the edge and um you know i gotta say that's a little disappointing to me because uh, and is not exactly centered. Neither of these knives are exactly centered. And and I'm not uh, I'm not trying to bust on Boker. I just gotta gotta say they're not they're not centered. And I'm not sure why. Boker's been making knives for since the 1800s. <laughs> I mean, um, but it it doesn't really affect the uh, the um, usage of this or or the enjoyment or the charm or anything else. But but it's just one of those details. Kind of like yeah, maybe this should be centered. Um, other than that and the, and the burr on the edge, I mean, I can take care of that. Uh, it's, uh, a great little fifth pocket knife. I mean, look at how small this thing is. So, um, yeah, I, I highly recommend checking it out. Um, you know, maybe I shouldn't say that. I don't highly recommend checking it out. What, what I, what I do say is that if you like little knives like this, if you like little switch blades, which I do, this this goes sits right next to my launch nine. Is it the nine, the little tiny one? Launch nine in my collection. I I like it. This might not be for everyone. And then of course I just mentioned that um, the centering issue. And I also mentioned that I got it for free. So um, you know, all of that taken into account, I think it's a cool knife. Uh, I do like the trigger action on top, and um, I do like most things about it. It does have a small lanyard post here. Um, which is something I might take advantage of. I do like lanyards on small, small knives. So mixed emotions on the Boker Shamsher, uh, but since I have it and it's mine, I, I like it. You get what I mean? But, but you know, all of those things I mentioned, if, if all of those things that I mentioned don't bother you, then check it out. All right, that wasn't exactly a ringing endorsement, but I, I, it shouldn't, shouldn't have to be. Okay, now I want to talk about something near and dear to my heart. And, and these are practical to tactical folders. These are knives that I get because, um, well, I get them because they are great at just doing everyday tasks, whatever those things happen to be. Uh, for me, I could really probably get away with a Boker Shamsher for my everyday tasks, except for cutting sandwiches. It's nicer to have something bigger. But my point is, uh, these are knives that are great for everyday carry tasks, but can flex into tactical very well uh, if need be. And pretty much do everything in between. And then I'm going to say, except hunting, because I'm very unfamiliar with um, hunting um, because I've never done it, uh, never skinned an animal, A. And B, I'm pretty sure I have a good idea of what you want out of, out of uh, a skinning knife. And maybe two or three in this list might be good for that. One in particular. And I'll mention it when we come up on it. But uh, for those of you out there who are hunters, let me know if 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 I'm right in the one that I think in this list would be good for this, for hunting, skinning an animal. All right, putting the hunting and skinning aside, let's take a look at great uh, practical to tactical knives. Uh, given that we just had Dirk Pinkerton on the show, I'll sh I'll start with his design first. Now, I could have put three others here that I really like that fit this category, but this one, this one I think does it with the most aplomb, excuse me, this, this is the contact from asymmetrical and asymmetrical is the middle tier, um, uh, middle tier, uh, line of knives from, um, beyond EDC. They have Terra, Terra, um, they have the, oh my God, they have the beyond EDC sort of budget and then midline, they have the asymmetrical, and then they have the Terra Nova, Terra Fundi, something. I can't remember what their high-end OEM uh, brand is. It's the, the same line that made the, the John Demko River Wolf. Um, 
Terramundi. Terramundi, that's what it's called. Okay, so this is from the asymmetric line where you will see S35VN, you'll see titanium, you'll see all the things that we called premium three or four years ago um, in, a, in a beautifully made um, sort of mid-tier priced knife. So why is this a great uh, practical to tactical? Well, I think it's pretty obvious. First of all, you look at the setup. Here, I'm going to place this down. If you look at the setup, you can see how the flat Warncliffe blade is at an angle to the, to the spine of the handle, an upward angle, kind of like a Japanese Kiridashi or um, he, he was uh, um, Dirk when I was talking to him about this knife, uh, said he was looking at the Pesh Cobbs. Uh, when he was making this. So I, I have to mention that. But to me, it looks a lot like a, um, a kiridashi with that upward flat angle, uh, upward flat edge there. And then you have that great tip at um, the perfect tactical triangular angle for a, um, for a Warncliffe. So Warncliffe's come in a number of different flavors. And my favorites are with the, with the least steep angle up front. I, the, le the less like a cleaver, the better. Now, this one is great for tactical for a couple of reasons. Great gription all around with the milling on the chamfer. Uh, great overall shape for ergonomics in the hand, uh, allowing for a number of different holds. Um, three, we, we know from the Yojimbo and, and uh, Michael Janich's research that Warncliffe blades do really, really uh, grievous damage in a slash. And, um, and, and in other fighting applications. And then lastly, when you take this and take advantage of those ne neutral ergonomics and you put it in Pical grip with the tip down and the edge in, it's, uh, it angles that blade perfectly, um, sort of in that reaching forward angle, just like a dedicated Pical knife would. So I'm talking about this angle right here, the angle of the blade off of the fist. So really a great knife in, in any case. To me, this is a gentleman's knife because it's nice and light. The action is just butter. It's so, uh, it's so smooth and a uh, pleasure. It's a pleasure. This is actually similar to the, the pinion. It doesn't drop and chop your finger off, uh, but it, it has a nice one nudge drop. And I, I really like that. Uh, and then you get a little touch of, touch of color there with that nicely uh, anodized blue titanium pocket clip. So first is the Asymmetric Contact by Dirk Pinkerton. <coughs> Excuse me. Next up, now this is the one that I, th I said I thought might be useful in a hunting context. But this is the Vosteed Nightshade. Uh, just a <laughs> very interesting looking knife. I gave this, this was on last week's list and i gave this the best uh broken lock look knife because it looks like that lock is not engaged or is broken and the knife and the blade hasn't swung open fully uh, but that is open and in locked position and um because of that because of that uh funny downward angle of that blade to the handle uh, you get a lot of utility benefit it's putting the tip down below your knuckles even uh, giving you great sort of utility cutting, pull cutting, draw cutting, access to that point. <coughs> you get access to that point as if it were a Warncliffe, but you still have all of that belly underneath. Now, look, this is what I mean. If this were a Warncliffe, it would, it would basically come off the handle. I mean, it's still angled down. It would still be an angled down Warncliffe. But look at all that belly you get to add and still make it to the tip easily without screwing your wrist up so that downward angle and that belly add to its well okay utility you're cutting rope pulling it towards you cutting straps on a on a box pull it towards you uh maybe even going under a seat belt with that curved blade pulling towards you you get uh, uh say you're you have to use it this way it's like a recurve it's like having a kukri in your hand or a barong but uh, and then that is what makes it very tactical. Also, that downward angle accelerates the cut. Uh, by the time your hand and your knuckles get to the same plane of the thing that you're cutting, you've already cut it in half or, or what have you. A lot of the knives you see behind me from the Philippines have this sort of angle on them. 
And that was the whole point, to accelerate the slashing and the chopping and the cutting uh, ability, whether it's in the field or on the battlefield. So this Vostid Nightshade, um, I think it's a real uh, wolf in sheep's clothing. It looks kind of uh, bumbling. It looks um, kind of cute or whatever. But it is, I mean, to me, oh, and also on a thrust. You don't have to change your wrist angle at all on a thrust. So very, very cool. Uh, like I said, I think it's like a sheep's and, sheep and wolf's clothing. You might take a look at that and think, hmm. But uh, I wouldn't be on the, wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of it. Uh, whether I were a piece of cardboard or a criminal. Okay, uh, next up is, this is an awesome one and a classic, but sort of a newer version of a classic. This is the Delica Warncliffe serrated oh yeah uh this is the only serrated knife on this list i find that serrations are more uh tactical than practical personally um i know but that's my own usage if i were working somewhere where i needed to cut a lot of fibrous stuff or cut ropes maybe cut open sackcloth or that kind of thing uh it would come in very very handy and practical but for my lifestyle uh a a straight edge a non-serrated straight edge is more practical to me. So this this one, you get the practical in the size. Uh, this is a great back pocket knife. By the way, these are aftermarket titanium scales, and that's a uh, from Smoky Mountain Knife Works. And this is a, a MXG gear clip. Uh, the long clip on the Delica is really annoying, but the short these short clips feel fine in hand. Uh, like I was saying, the practical part of this is the worn cliff nature. The, that first uh, quarter inch or half inch there that's unserrated is is really uh, great for um, pretty much any sort of pull cut, draw cut kind of thing and uh, kind of action. And then those um, spidey teeth are just wicked and nasty and probably my favorite. I do like cold steel serrations, um, but the the small peaks on them tend to bend with hard use. So um, this would be devastating if you needed to use this uh, in, a, in a tactical sense, of course. Um, those serrations, that low tip and the straight edge uh, would would be uh, you know pretty pretty nasty to come up against. Uh, the titanium handle for that purpose, probably not the best. Uh, you get more gription with the with the GRN handle scales that come with it. But since this was a gift, uh, I just I wanted to make sure that I don't know. I just wanted to dress it up a little bit and make it make it something that I I really um, love even more. Uh, but uh, yeah, this was a gift, and I'm very 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 grateful uh, for that. Thank you, sir. All right, next up, uh, I want to talk about this one. This gets a lot of action. You see this a lot here. And you see it's Big Brother a lot here. This is the Cayman from Off Grid Knives. The Cayman gets uh, a lot of use around the house here. Uh, it's sort of an unsung hero. It's not unsung because I talk about it a bit, but um, I don't carry it much. I just use it. Um, you know, I don't, I don't take her out and show her off. I just, you know what I mean. Okay, so this has a low point. Uh, the point is below center line. It's got almost a straight edge, and yet it's it's got that incredible piercing bowie tip. It's got a long, long swedge and uh, and a dramatic look. You know, it looks like its namesake, the Cayman, small crocodilian found in the in the um, in South America. Uh, the handle is a very nicely contoured G10. They make an XL version of this which is more tactical than practical, I'd say. But this one right here, um, that low point, and uh, really allows you to do all sorts of um, utility cuts and, and pulling drag cuts and stuff like that with this tip without having to change your wrist angle much. Uh, but it also gives you an exquisite point and really great ergonomics with jimping that goes all the way up um, to, the, to the swedge, making this really great in hand uh for tactical purposes let me let me let me stop for a second and say what to kind of define what i mean by that uh with a tactical grip i think it's got to be um either totally neutral kind of like we see with the contact it's pretty much neutral so that you can change to any grip 
or it's got to be contoured like this with jimping to lock you in and have uh, uh, nothing fancy used to call it a traction plan. Like this is has a real plan to stay in your hands. The traction plan here is the contouring, the the uh, surface of the G10, and then the jimping. And that's the traction plan for this. So this has a great feel uh, in hand if you needed to, to wield it, heaven forbid. But um, if not, and you're just going to use it for cutting up cardboard and sandwiches and stuff like that, it's it's man it'll it'll take care of you for sure it's got nice thin blade stock and a and a um, mid-height saber grind it's so thin behind the edge all these off-grid knives are wickedly wickedly thin here you can see that right there very very nice knife and uh if you like it but you want something bigger check out the xl version of the off-grid knives cayman oh yeah and as jim has put up on screen we have an affiliate link uh, with Awkward, it's one of the few knife companies we have an affiliate link with because uh, we believe in them wholeheartedly and love their stuff. All right, next up, another company I love wholeheartedly and love their stuff, Finch. You didn't think Finch was going to be on this list, did you? But yes, uh, all knives can be turned to wickedness if need be, and this one especially. This is the Holiday. That's two L's. That's not a misspelling. That's for Doc Holiday. Um, this was designed by Spencer um, of, uh, of Finch Knife Company as a tribute to his father, who was a big um, lover of Old West tales and, and figures and, and just, uh, you know, loved that part of history. So he designed this knife after Doc Holliday. And an interesting thing about it, his uh, knife inspiration was the doctor's knife, uh, which is a slip joint that usually has a long pen blade and a long flat spatula and a rectangular elongated rectangular handle with a squared off butt and the purpose of this knife was to when a doctor would show up to your house when you were ill back in the old days and they were going to give you a pill instead of giving it to you and you swallow it they would cut it and grind it up so they cut it with the with the blade and then grind it up with the flat butt and then put it into water, make a tincture, and then you drink it down. But then they stir it up with a little spatula. Very, very cool. I need to get one of those in my life. I got my dad one. He's a retired physician. I got him a um, a case doctor's knife, and and he's always thought that was really cool. This so it has it has the elements of the doctor's knife. It's called the Doc Holiday, which is kind of uh, well, I'm sure not a coincidence. It's a bolster lock, but it has this great. Warncliffe blade, perfectly straight edge with the tip exactly aligned with the bottom of the handle. And uh, so you get you get great utility out of this thing. Um, again, these kind of cuts, these utility cuts where you're pulling or under a strap and pulling towards you or rope or string or what have you. Um, but then you have this. You just reverse it and put the tip down. And much like the uh, contact over here, you have a great Pical style knife uh, because the handle is totally neutral, even more neutral than the contact. You can hold it any way you want and it's going to feel the same. And so if you needed to turn this thing to wickedness, uh, you could. Hey, if you're looking at my watch and you're thinking, hey, did Bob get a Rolex? No, I didn't. That's a Pagani. It's a tribute watch for those who can't imagine spending ten thousand dollars on a watch but like the design so this is a funny thing i'm actually i'm going on um i'm going on dirk warning and uh alex tussaud's podcast tonight and they're both into watches and i'm going to ask them how they feel about this is this like getting a a microtech clone because you don't want to spend microtech money or is this something different it doesn't say rolex on it anyway we're, we're gonna we'll talk all about that i mean i got it for uh a thousand percent less than a real one so there you go Okay, next up, this is a cool design. This was a gift to me from uh, Dave, this old Sword Blade Reviews, one of many. He's a very cool and generous dude with an amazing collection. Uh, anywho, this is one that he gave me, um, and I cherish it. It's called the Keen Natter from Civivi. And uh, it's got this great natural micarta handle. I just love this micarta. For some reason, not something about this handle in particular it's just great, my car. What can I say? It's soaked up my funk really well and patinaed nicely. But the the real star of the show is the blade. Recurve Tonto to me is a very good 
practical to tactical blade shape uh, because you you have two different kinds of grinds. You have a more robust flat grind up front where the tip is, and then you have the um, thinner hollow grind back here on the quote unquote straight. That's not straight. It's actually curved, but so uh, the same reason it's great for practical, it's great for tactical. And, and what I mean by that is uh, with the flat grind up front, it's great for thrusting. And then with this uh, curved edge here, it's great for slashing. And then down here, you're catching material in that recurve. And, uh, in, in, you know, so great for cutting rope, great for cutting uh, other things too. Uh, the traction plan on this is excellent. You have a nearly neutral handle. You've got nice jimping. You can come high up. You, it also gives you this for practical purposes, a little choil if you need to come up. But it's very secure in hand with that, with that really simple, neutral, uh, gently curved handle. And feels great, and it's nice and light, and it gets nice and thin and slicey behind the edge. Um, also, it's a little menacing looking, and, and there's something to be said for menace. In terms of, uh, you know, they say in, in, in you know, quote unquote, knife defense work, the other guy should never see the knife. It's just like uh, it should be felt, not seen. And and uh, that is the ideal. But but if it were to be seen, this is a um, so it would be a scary thing to see. What can I say? I guess all of these would. But uh, that recurve Tonto to me is is especially intimidating. Next up is a des uh, design made by Concept, uh, designed by K. Max Rom uh, of France. This is the, excuse me, this is the Concept Preta 2. Preta 2 in French means do everything. Yeah. Uh, and this is, um, I, I, I broke it down. Oh, yeah, that's right. I don't speak French, but I, I do know that. Uh, he told me that anyway. That's what it means. But pret is ready, right? And then uh, two, two is everything. <laughs> All right. Anyway, this uh, feels great in hand. It, it's different though. And the Keen Natter had this straight um, neutral handle. This has a very curved uh, handle that sort of puts your hand in the position it wants your hand to be in. Uh, whether you're in um, saber grip like this using the the thumb ramp and kind of choked back or up here in filipino grip and using the pressure from the thumb to bear down uh, with a push cut either way this knife is super super comfortable and sure and locked in hand um so i i won't really go into why this is good practical because you can just look at it it's just a it just kind of looks like a clip point blade um You've got, actually, I will, you, from that curved handle, you do have good access to that point, um, even though there's a nice big belly here, um, and the point is still about center line with the, with the pivot and this tail screw. Um, so having the curve, curves it in your hand, makes it a little more uh, readily available, but it's nothing like having a Warncliffe in terms of those, uh, those sort of pull cuts. But it's a thin... Um, mostly uh, flat ground blade here. So it, it really does slice very nicely, um, adding to its practical um, value. But to me, this feels more like a, more like a, it's set up for uh, tactical use. Uh, you've got that, like I said, the curved handle, but also the, the fluting really does grab the handles. It is, or really does grab the fingers. It is uh, canvas micarta, so it gets more grippy the wetter it gets. And um, this right here, this thumb swale, just is begging for a pressure cut, uh, push cut sort of thing. Uh, but of course, not through cardboard. You can't really do that sort of cut through cardboard because your thumb is there. So this to me is like a slashing, thrusting, sort of self defense knife uh, that would have practical uses. So we're starting to turn. And uh, to me, this is uh, to me this is a good blend, a good balance uh, of both. Next up, the Kaiser XL Big Lighter, or Big Lighter, or however people pronounce it. Uh, but this is great because it's a full four-inch blade, and the blade itself is 
man, it's very kind of, how, how am I going to say this? Plain or neutral, but I mean it in a very good way. You know, there's not much, um, there's not much to it. It's got that beautiful swedge. It, it is a drop point, not a dagger uh, style, um, but it's got a nice, thin, slicey blade. Uh, what is this blade steel? I can never remember. Uh, 154 cm. I do love 154 cm. Uh, but it just reminds me of a bayonet. That blade reminds me of a bayonet blade. And the fact that it's four inches um, and, and the overall length of this thing is pretty big. Uh, it's about nine inches. It feels like a substantial. This is one of the few um, Kaisers or or knives in, in this category that I will carry front front right pocket because it feels like it's a do all knife uh, in terms of its size, too. Um, you know, my wheelhouse is 3.5 to 4 inches, so uh, the larger size I'm I'm preferential to. Um, but with that linen micarta handle, feels so grippy, so good, and gives you nice distance off uh, from the tip of that blade. This thing is sweet. Also, you've seen you've seen me just doing this. It's also very fun. I mean, if part of your practical use of a knife is uh, emotional support. This is a great one for it. You know, if you just need to <laughs> flick your knife open and closed and drive people around you crazy, but work through some things, you know, I'm, I'm working things out. Uh, just doing this. That's all. All right. Let me put this down. All right. Second to last in this esteemed list is a cold steel. And now I could have put a lot of cold steels in here, but. I wanted to go for the one that seemed the most readily available and the most economical. And to me, it's the Voyager series and the large because they come in XL and they used to come in small or in medium. But now now it's just the large and the and the XL. So this is the Voyager clip point also comes in the drop point, the Vaquero and the Tonto. Uh, I think this or the drop point are the most practical. Um, you have a good, decent bit of uh, straight. Uh, cutting edge there, nice belly, a strong tip with a swedge. Uh, that tip with the curve of this handle is at center line. And then you have this great fat handle. I mean, these things are um, very, very, very sure in hand. They have this contour, uh, the contour from top to bottom, and then they have the uh, iron cross pattern milled or not milled but um, sort of cast in there so the grip is really great and then you get different places you can grip you can choke up you can be normal and <laughs> be normal and you can come up here like this uh the larger versions of this even give you grips down here but um so very very sure in hand this is a great outdoor um like a camp knife or a great uh, for me in the backyard just need a knife in my pocket to cut stuff. Uh, this is a great knife for that, but also would make for an excellent fighting knife. This is a four inch blade. And at in the normal, normal saber grip like this, you have an inch and a quarter here between your finger and that cutting edge. So you have a lot of standoff range with this, with this knife for a four inch blade. And you get that a lot in cold steel knives because they have in the Demco designed cold steel knives from the classic era because they have this area here. Even the um, the Recon ones kind of have this area here. So your fingers are um, kept away from the blade at, at a considerable distance, which puts the point even further out, which makes your standoff range even larger. But they also offer this flat area where if you need to be up here to really be precise with what you're cutting, you can do so. So the Voyager series, I just think it's hard to beat the Voyager series. Now you could you could go for the um, better materials uh, and the thinner design with the Recon One series, but you don't have the same selection of blade shapes. You don't get the Tonto, or you don't get the uh, Drop Point. Oh yeah, you do. Uh, what you don't get is the Vaquero. So there you go. All right, last up in this list is was designed tactical but is extremely practical and that is the yojimbo by cold steel it, it is essentially a large 
uh, utility knife. You've got that, again, you've got that great tip angle, just like you have on the contact for a Warncliffe. And also, if you look at the Rick Hinderer knives, Warncliffe, it also has the same angle at the tip. So that is a great angle for both um, draw cuts and the kind of utility cuts you might be uh, using with any sort of mat knife or, or um, you know, utility blade like this. Uh, but you also get the straight edge and the ergonomic package. So here, this thing fits in your hand like a dream. Um, just, just really fits nicely. Of course, I have this five by five uh, uh, pickpocket thing here that just uh, helps you wave. You know, you wave open the blade with this thing, but also puts your thumb in a nice position too. I always like the swale down there, but right here is nice. Um, so practical as the day is long, and then obviously we know this was designed as a tactical knife by uh, Michael Janich, uh, who has done a lot of research into the Warncliffe style blade, that straight edge with the point, with the triangular point, um, and just how effective it is in slashing. Um, because as you slash with a Warncliffe, that tip is always engaging. Whereas with a um, with an upswept blade, uh, the cutting diminishes as as your arm arcs through the cut. Because everything's with an arcing motion on the human body, uh, the straighter the edge and the lower the point, the more it's going to be damaging uh, during that cut. So this is the list. Now I could go through my entire knife collection and call put every one of them on this list because. Every knife can be used as a weapon and every knife can be used to do practical things. But these are the ones that jumped out to me due to their sizes and due to the, the their, um, their varied uses. I mean, uh, varied applications for blade shape. So that's the asymmetrical contact, the Vosteed nightshade, uh, the Delica Warncliffe. Love the Warncliffe on the Delica and then the serrations cherry on top. Off grid Cayman. We got the Holiday from Finch Knife Co. We have the Keen Natter from Civivi and uh, the Concept Predator 2, the XL Begleiter from Kaiser, uh, the Voyager series, we'll say, from Cold Steel, and the Spider Co. Yojimbo. Practical to tactical. Now, let me know in the comments below uh, if you agree or if you disagree or what else should be added to this um, list. But also, I mentioned hunting up front. Um, which one of these would be good for hunting and which one of these would be disastrous? Uh, please let me know that too. All right. So November 17th, we're going to be doing a uh, uh, the Gentleman Junkie Knife Giveaway. That's Thursday, the third Thursday of November. I have yet to decide which one of the many knives uh, that have been sent in uh, will, will be a giveaway knife. Uh, thank you, Dave. This old sword blade reviews. He just sent me a batch and uh, we'll get we'll get that. Uh, we'll get those out to you. Post haste, that information that is. All right. So, uh, working his magic behind the switcher is Jim, for whom I am quite grateful. And I'd like to say, until I see you next time, please don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Thank you.